Yeah, hi there, Karen, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass the TOEFL IBT, and um, you are going to, uh, actually, you completed, I think, a pronunciation pretest, uh, part A, and also part B, so let me go ahead and put both of these up on the same, I can see both. the same time here can we go to Google here okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, pronunciation pretest web page also Okay, here we go, almost there. Can okay, we go to the pronunciation section? So diagnostic pretest for vowel and consonant sounds. I think we have it. Okay, here we go. Make a little more room over here. Okay, here we go. Review recording. So I'm going to start again with that part A. I'm following the 90 day lesson plan. And this is the third day, so I'm going to start with... Okay, here we go. Hello, Michael. My name is Karen. I'm so sorry because I had a problem with my microphone in the last, uh, the previous recording. So uh, don't worry about it. No problem. I'm going to start again with the part All right. A. I'm following the 90-day lesson plan. Okay. And this is the third day, so I'm going to start with the part A. Okay, when you're saying the word part, part A, you have to produce that P with a little more air than uh, what you're doing. So I noticed that just in your speech right there. Of this assignment. Bought, bought, wrong, grow, honor, over, father, thug. So though, though. Boat, grow, over, those. So the O, you need to pronounce that. Make make the sound a little bit longer than what you're doing. It's not O, oh, O, oh, grow. It's grow, grow, over, though. Bat, bot, map, mop, tag, dog, and on. Mac, mop. Okay, okay. Bright. Brown, broil, lie, loud, loyal, buy, pound, gate, get, late, let, made, met, blade, bled, then, then. Okay, now the next one is going to be tough. 80% of the students I teach cannot distinguish between these two vowels, so let's see how you do. Meet, met, pet, pet, lip, lip, sit, sat, hit, hit. 
Okay, I'm going to say you're 80% there, but you need to take a look at that lesson also. Meet, mit, peat, pit, leap, lip. So you, you particularly need practice with the E, E, meet, peat, leap, seat, heat, that particular sound. Look, look, lock, choke, tool, talk, could, cool. All right, I think you should review that lesson too, number 12. Match, mash, sheep, sheep. No, it's cheap sheep. Cheap sheep. Fisher, fisher, shaved, shaft. Okay, this is this is hard for you. Cheer, cheer. Now you're not really distinguishing between these, so you need to work on this one a little bit more. Match, mash, cheap sheep. Off, off, half. Have fine, fine, fan, van. I think you need to work on that of have vine van waver. So particularly when you have the V in the beginning of the word, you're not really pronouncing that V with enough vibration. Waver, waver, how habit, who rehash. Behavior, hate, bad man, sorry, bad man, beaten, important, brightened, hatrack, threatened. Close. You're pretty close on that. The hard sound here, it's called the glottal stop. Batman, important, brightening, hat rack, threatened, threatened, hat rack. So lesson 15. Uh, you can still practice that glottal stop a little bit more. Major, measure, fragile, frazier, legend, lesson. So you're having trouble with the j, measure, fraser, lesion, lesion. Engine, assure, large, Asia. Okay, you can do the sound. You did it in this word, but you're struggling. Measure, Frazier, Lesion, Asia, Asia. So, lesson number 16, you want to work on that. It's a palatal consonant, the j, j. Cake, cag, sink, sack, came, game, cap, gap. Lake, lag, lean, rear, better, luggage, rocked, order, right, light, committed, pace. Okay, so on this one you have, I'm going to say that's okay. Base, flap, flap, cap, calf. Not really, so I think you got to practice 19. Uh, notice this. You have the B and the P here. The P is a voiceless consonant. Notice how the vowel was shorter before it. Flap. But you have the, the B, which is a voice consonant. The vowel is longer. Flab. So then we have flap, flab. Cap, cab. Lap, lab. So we have short, long, short, long, short long. you learn about it as you go through the pronunciation lessons. Voiceless consonants typically make the vowel before or which precedes the consonant long uh, shorter and then a, a voice consonant will make that vowel longer. But I definitely think that you need practice with lesson 19. I even made that observation even before you started. I think the pretest I noticed with the P you're not producing the P with enough air. It's probably a very different sound from your own language. Lap, lap, pay, pay, lies, lies. So it's lice, lies, z, lice, lies. Zip, zip, 
su, zu, mês, mês, Elisa, Elisa. Okay, not bad. Multiple, proverb, example, pressure, principle, number, people, philosopher, vol volcanism, written, maximum, question, summer, reason, chasm, often. Okay, this is okay. Tip, tip, card, card, tight, tight. Again, now I'm going to say you're not pronouncing that T with enough air. Notice the difference here again. You remember short, long, short, long. How about this? Cart, card. Tight, tied. Fat, fad. Again, short, long, short, long, short, long. Why is that? Because here you have the T, which is a voiceless consonant. The vowel which precedes it will be shorter. The D is a voice consonant, which is going to make the vowel longer, which precedes it. So you're not really making that distinction. Train, drain, fat, fat, team, dream, tie, thigh. No, 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 no. You got to get the tongue between the teeth. Thigh, thigh. Breath, breathe. Breathe, breathe. Teeth, teeth, teeth. Through, talk, worth, worthy. So the, the most difficult for you is when you have the TH at the beginning of a word, this is where you want to pay more attention. You want to make sure you're pronouncing it correctly. You do better when the TH is in the middle or at the end of the word, but when it's in the beginning, you're having some trouble there. Okay, this is the part A. I'm going to record another file. I would say get in the habit, not I'm going to record, but get in the habit of speaking, I'm going to record. Because when you're doing TOEFL speaking, it's probably better to be a little more formal uh, in your speech. Now, one thing I want to talk to you a little bit about right now, uh, uh, based on part A, there are some lessons that you want to focus on, and I'm going to, I've, I've already mentioned them, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say them all at one, at one time here. Uh, lesson number 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19, 23, and also lesson number 24. These are the lessons based on the pretest. I think you want to spend more time uh, focusing on those. And remember, uh, I would go through all of my pronunciation lessons, but pay particular attention to the ones that I just outlined. Now, the next thing is you're going to answer three specific questions. And the reason you're doing this, this helps me understand more about your speaking and pronunciation of American English. Uh, remember that my pronunciation area in my course is separate from the speaking section of my course uh, because I think you need a lot of practice in, in both of those areas if you want to get higher than 26. Okay, so I also have to use, uh, after you're done speaking, I'm going to go to the intelligibility uh, area, and I'll actually give you an intelligibility score. Seven means you're a native speaker. One means you are a beginner speaker of American English, and obviously you're not a beginner. But the question is, how high are you, and what, what work or practice do you need? How long is it going to take for you to get to where you want to be? Okay, so let's go back. Okay, now you're going to answer the three Part questions. B. Thank you. You're welcome, and thank you for completing Part A. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my VoxyPop discussion group. So we have part A we've listened to. Now we're going to listen to part B. So you spent about four minutes answering these questions. That's going to give me a lot of information, by the way. Hello, Michael. I'm going to start with the part B of this assignment. So the first question says, what is your educational background and your work history? All right. 
Okay, I have a bachelor degree in computer systems engineering, wow. and I've been working as a software engineer for almost eight years. I have been working for, so you have your present perfect progressive, that's exactly the grammar you should use in that situation. Working mainly in Java and .NET platforms. I would say Java, Java, J Java, Java. Um, in my first... Uh... Now you're having some pauses and hesitations in there. That can be a bad sign. That means that it could cause you some trouble on your TOEFL speaking because you want to try to speak fluently and clearly. You're actually speaking fairly clearly, but you're not fluent because of some of those pauses. Employment, I was uh, like uh, for about five years. Then I decided to to go to another company a little bit bigger with 1,005. I would say co company, company. 100 employees, but with the same role pretty much. But the important thing is so now as you're speaking just spontaneously, I'm starting to hear your non-native speaker accent. Of this is that I was working with clients in another country, in the United States. So In another country, con country. It was very interesting. After that, I want to work. Say after the, after that. Remember that TH sound. You want to pay attention to that. Your tongue's probably almost between your teeth, but not quite. So it almost sounds like after that, after that, after that. To, uh, to Canada on an on-site project, also in Java platform. And this project lasted uh, one year. And there, now that, that means you might be speaking either Spanish or Portuguese by saying year, but it's one year. One year, not one year, but one year. So that Y consonant sound, you're confusing it a little bit with the J consonant sound in, uh, in English. And it was about uh, bank devices. Currently, I'm working in Mexico uh, on, a, on a project for the government. Okay, and cool. I'm in the requirements area, like... Uh, going with a client and having business meetings and document all important information for for this project. Um, the second question says, "Why?" Say the second question. Question. Is it important for you to improve your speaking and pronunciation abilities of American English? All right. It's very important because, you know, I'm pursuing a, a, to study a master's degree in another country like England, Canada, or the United States. All right. So I'm, I've been researching a little bit about the requirements, and they require a very good English, specifically yes. in... I would say... I would say a high level of English proficiency, if you want to be more exact, not just good English. That's a little bit basic vocabulary. Uh, for TOEFL, you want to use a little bit higher level, so you might say they require a high level of English proficiency. Speaking and reading abilities. So I, I think I have to improve this area because uh, here in Mexico I almost don't have the opportunity to practice. So I, I think that... No, maybe not, though. I want you to check out something. Uh, go on the Internet. Go to www.toastmasters.org. Again, toastmasters.org. Let me see if I can show you this organization here for a minute. And uh, there might be an organization, a, a, a club. It's a speaking club. You might find one close to your community. That's why I'm... I'm bringing this out. Actually, I'll just have you do it on your own. It's going to take up too much time in this video. And the longer I spend, the bigger this file becomes and the harder it is to upload to the Internet. But, but again, Toastmasters.org. Check it out for yourself. I want you to learn about that website. Let me put it here for you.
see that right there I'll make it a little bit bigger for you and the thing is even though you're living in Mexico see if you can find a speaking club close to your city and join that club that way you have more opportunities uh, to speak English I I need another uh, kind of practice like this uh, this awesome course and right. that's why currently it's important for me now if you use my course that's great and you're going to get a lot of improvement uh, you, you should expect about five to ten points for each month that you use my course in your overall TOEFL score right so if you're patient and you follow my lessons for about 90 days it's really going to help you improve your academic English language proficiency but Karen you also know that you have to find other opportunities you'll know as you go through my lessons that it becomes important for you to read on a regular basis read books magazines and such you can watch TV or go to the internet and practice listening or watch videos things like that so you want to make sure you're getting a lot of exposure to the language right now in order to get a scholarship to get a master degree uh, the third question is what do you hope to achieve in this course I would say there achieve what do you hope to achieve achieve in this course okay as you know I want to present the TOEFL test the IBT I would say not present say as you as you know I want to take or complete the TOEFL test and um, I'd like to get a 100 score that's my goal for the how about this I would like to get a at least a score of 100 I would probably say in that sense you say at least a score of 100 it means 100 points or more on the TOEFL exam scores because uh, I presented this test like two years ago I would say not presented I don't think that's the right word I would say I took the exam or completed the exam and I got a 77 score out of 120. Okay. I also presented the IPT like one month ago and I got a 587 score. So I think it's not enough. So 580 out of 677, that's going to put you, uh, that's the paper based TOEFL, right? So. You, you should be getting pretty close to that. I think I need to improve some specific areas, and that's where I hope of this course. Okay. To get like a more than 100 score in order to, to be accepted for some university and for some scholarship for this master degree. This is my answer. Thank you so much. All right, and uh, thank you for completing the pronunciation pretest. Now let's take a look at your intelligibility score. We want to kind of see where you are right now. So one being a high beginner, seven being a native speaker. Uh, I'm going to put you at the high end of intermediate right now. I'm going to put you at 4.0 out of seven. This is kind of where I think you fit right now. Uh, you can also read, and I'll, I'll include a link to this in the uh, discussion thread. You can learn more about what four means. It means a student has obvious accent and pronunciation variations, but these do not interfere with understanding and are rarely distracting. The student uses a variety of grammatical structures with occasional grammatical errors. The student can respond to questions with sustained and connected discourse. You use varied vocabulary. Your vocabulary is a little bit basic, I'll be honest with you. But again, I think that you probably fit in this area. Now, your goal for TOEFL is by the time you finish my pronunciation lessons, try to get a 5.1 or higher on my pronunciation post-test. This is where you want to be. Student has a barely detectable accent pronunciation is almost like that of a native speaker this is your goal you have rare isolated mispronunciations but no evident patterns of error you have a mastery 
of grammatical structures. You have extensive vocabulary and you speak fluently. This is where you want to be. So you're not exactly there yet. Remember, speak English as much as you can. Watch TV. Listen to the radio. Listen to music. Uh, do as much as you can. Get as much exposure to the language as possible. And you will continue to improve. All righty. Anyway, uh, Karen, thank you very much for completing the pretest. Now you know two things. Number one, you know which pronunciation lessons in my online TOEFL course uh, you should focus on. And you also know what your intelligibility score is and also what your goal is upon completing this course. All right. Have a great day.